Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and I'm back on the 922 test server to give you a full preview of a brand new Tier 10 Tank Destroyer, which is a replacement for the Object 263. This is the Object 268 version 4. This is a very fast Tier 10 Tank Destroyer, and while it doesn't have the biggest of guns with a 152mm caliber gun with 650 alpha damage, it also has rather impressive frontal armor, and it's got a rear-mounted turret as well. Stick around, I've got some gameplay coming right up to show you what this tank is all about. But firstly, let's see how it stacks up compared to its competition as we run down its statistics. So unless you've been hiding under a rock, as you all know by now, the Object 263 in Update 922 is going to be dropped down from Tier 10 to Tier 9. And its replacement will be the Object 268 version 4, and you can kind of see why Wargaming are thinking about doing this. They're remodeling this entire tank destroyer branch as being these kind of fairly mobile, but well-armored, but kind of undergunned tank destroyers. And you can immediately see that when you look at the damage per minute under 2,300. That is utterly a bit for a tank that only has 650 alpha damage. To have that kind of DPM, you'd be hoping to have the Jagdpanzer E100's 170 mm caliber gun capable of dealing 1,050 damage, or even the FV215B 183 mm main armament, which deals 1,150 damage. And when it comes to purely dealing the damage and killing multiple targets in front of you, or a single target that will take multiple hits, this vehicle is going to pale in comparison to the Object 268 and even the WZ-130. G and what the Object 263 used to be like. At least the penetration on this gun isn't a disaster. 293 is still great and it should allow you to be competitive even in tier 10 only matchups. The premium rounds on this tank though are a little bit disappointing. 360 millimeters of heat penetration that can't live up to the full blooded 152 millimeter the Object 268 has with 395 millimeters of penetration. Furthermore, take a look at the high explosive rounds. On the Object 268 they deal a whopping 1100 alpha damage if you manage to penetrate, while the high explosive rounds on the 268 version 4 are rather disappointing with 840. That doesn't feel like nearly as big of a step up, as the damage goes up by less than 200 compared to the armor piercing rounds, whereas on the object 268, well, you're packing 350 extra alpha damage compared to your armor piercing rounds, so definitely take this into account when you're fighting against an object 268 that they probably need to penetrate you with armor piercing or heat, and it's unlikely that they're going to load lots of high explosive rounds against both lightly armored targets and very very heavily armored targets. This vehicle has exactly the same rate of fire as the 113G, it just has a hundred less alpha damage and it's got a worse rate of fire and worse alpha damage than the Object 268. So does the gun handling make up for this? Well, the vehicle has lovely aim time, this thing is going to be snapshotting like a complete boss, but just like all of the other tier 10 Soviet tanks that are going into the game, terrible accuracy 0.42 will make this the least accurate tier 10 tank destroyer in the game, even worse than the FV215. 5B183 and that thing's most likely firing Hess shells so it doesn't need to hit weak points. Dispersion wise this thing is great when moving but not so good when it's only turning the gun. Seems like Wargaming really want this to be kind of a shoot and scoot tank destroyer right? Depression wise the vehicle's got 5 degrees but its gun traverse is actually rather nice, 12 degrees to the left and 12 degrees to the right, slightly better than the 268 and significantly better than the old 263 that it's replacing. Now onto the mobility and this is where it's great news for the version 4, 55 kilometers an hour forwards and 22 backwards, this thing goes backwards ludicrously quickly. And that can be incredibly useful when you're wanting to stop somebody from either getting your side, or when you want to pull back quickly around the corner to avoid taking that extra hit, or hopefully the hit in the first place. Just like the 705A, this thing gets a whopping engine of 1,500 horsepower, and considering the vehicle weighs 75 tons, it has an incredible power to weight ratio of 20. That means this thing is going to be very, very nice for ramming things. And moreover, considering this excellent power to wait, the ground resistances aren't half bad, only slightly worse than the 268 and the 113 and the same as the old Object 263. However, there's one thing that does suck about this tank and that is the traverse speed, 23 degrees a second means that even though you've got that fantastic power to weight ratio, it kind of turns more like a boat. And the Object 263 had 50% better traverse on pretty much all terrain, and even the 268 turns significantly faster than the new version 4. And so keep it in mind when you're going to be fighting a 268 version 4 next patch, that while it can go backwards quickly, it's not going to be able to turn quickly. Now onto the armor, and this is where it looks like it's pretty good news for the 268 version 4. 250 millimeters at the front, 100 at the side, that looks just better than the 
268 and pretty much the same if not better than the Object 263 that it's replacing. And on closer inspection, this vehicle actually has better than stated armor, 290 millimeters along the lower plate, while it's 250 along the superstructure here, and even this weak point, so to say, this periscope looking device or view range finder, still has 250 millimeters of protection. And so that means when we go to live, good luck tier eight tanks going through any part of this vehicle frontally. And even tier nine tanks are not going to be able to get through that lower plate, even tier 10 tanks, unless they load premium rounds and hopefully shoot up into the lower plate here. Superstructure wise, when the vehicle's not using any of its gun depression, it's still got 300 millimeters of effective armor. And when it's using some of its gun depression, well, yeah, good luck getting through the upper plate of this armor. Furthermore, we're a bit like the Object 705A, that new tier 10 heavy tank, this thing looks like it's going to be rather good for side scraping out round of a corner. All of your side armor will be protected like this. Your superstructure is still 300 millimeters of effective protection and your lower plate, well, that's not going to take many hits, is it? And even when your opponents get your side, this armor is still quite tricky to get through unless you're a tier 10 tank destroyer with 240 millimeters. But be warned, just like many of the Soviet vehicles going into the game, the upper part of the side of its hull is well angled and so you will be ricocheting off that fairly reliably. So either shoot it below that part near the tracks or alternatively get more of the side armor and then you've got easy penetrations. So to go with this decent armor, the vehicle has 2,100 hit points. Very nice indeed, but unfortunately its view range is 370, which means that you're pretty much gonna be taking binoculars on this tank if you want to have very, very good view range, but you might be able to get away with coated optics if you have an exceptionally skilled crew, but you're still only gonna get up to about 430. But you know what? I think that's quite enough jibber jabber. Let's give it a trial by combat. So we're rolling out on Lakeville and surprise, surprise, a tier 10 only matchup. That's all I was getting on the test server. And the reason why I stress that is because I haven't really had an opportunity to see how these very well armored tier 10 Soviet tanks that I've showcased three new tier 10 tanks in the last three days are going to do against tier eight and tier nine tanks. And obviously they can have less penetration. Your armor is going to hold up a hell of a lot more and you could probably be even more cheeky. But look how fast the object 268 version four here was. Oh, wow. That was an awful shot. Well, I, I did a great job of an annihilating that rock with that 152 millimeter shell. Good job, quacky baby. But I was trying to highlight just how mobile this tank is with its 20 power to weight ratio. We race into position. Oh, will we be able to snipe a shot here against the Type 5? Well, we don't know if that one went in, but it looks like it hit the dirt rather than hitting its tracks. Nevertheless, the high explosive rounds shoved over the top of my tank towards the T-62A. Thank God I didn't pull back into that one. And they're probably going to be spotted as well. So I'm starting to get a little bit nervous about sitting here. There's lots of sneaky tanks on the enemy team like that T-100 LT is still alive. And there you go. The FV-405 has been spotted. And I'm tanking a shot for him by the looks of it from the 268 version 4. Now those guys are going to be flanking around towards the east. I'm just going to slow play it at the start of this game. Just try and lock down this position, try and spot out. Now we know where that T100 LT is. I'm going to maybe try and blind fire around at him. Will we fire? No, I decide not to. The rate of fire on this tank isn't that good. I actually just saw a tree fall here, which suggests the T100 LT has actually made his way into this position. But I don't think I picked that up as the game was going on. So third object tier 10 review in the last three days. What do I think about all of these vehicles? And if I could only get one, which one would I be going for? Well, that, that kind of maybe spoils the rest of the video, but I think if I could only have one, I, I don't know why, but something in me is saying the object 705A, that vehicle just feels rather novel. I, I, I don't know, but I just want to have arguably the best side scraper in the game. I think the 430U is absolutely fantastic. But it's not that different to a 1 2 1 for me to, to justify having it. Whereas I do feel that the side scraping potential of the 705A is absolutely phenomenal. Nevertheless, let's see if maybe this game in the 268 version 4 is going to change my mind. And wow, I gave too much lead there against the T100 LT. What an awful start for me. I was getting very frustrated at the time, and it's nothing to do with the 0.42 accuracy that this tank has. It's just purely me misjudging the situation. But when you're trying to snipe at a tank that's capable of going at 70 kilometers an hour, you really have to give a decent amount of lead. Now the T100 LT gets spotted. All right, thinking about shooting out towards the tank destroyers and the heavy tanks. Not gonna make it. Okay, let's have a go at this tier 10 light tank. Blah, okay. Yeah, yeah, basically the first one that I, I probably didn't bother to fully aim actually hits with the 0.42 accuracy, right? Okay, that was a pretty good snapshot. And that's what this tank is going to be doing. Yeah, I did highlight 
the great aim time and the great dispersion when moving on this tank. You can literally just drive forwards and within a couple of seconds be able to fire and then... I mean, that one didn't go anywhere near where I aimed it, but of course when you've got 293 millimeters of penetration and you're shooting at a tier 10 medium tank from above, it doesn't... you don't really need the precision point accuracy, right? And I guess if you need precise accuracy, then you'd want to play a different tank, or alternatively just load heat rounds in this, and then you've got 360 millimeters of pen, which should be more than enough. So there you go, right into the back of the Action 10. Ah, these rounds, they just don't feel like a tier 10 tank destroyer, right? It feels like I guess I'm driving the old 263, it's just I don't have the great rate of fire like the old 263 had. One hopefully into the Type 5 Heavy there. 666, the number of the beast. Oh, whoa, now will we get to shoot the 268 version 4 here? Oh, this rate of fire is abysmal. And when you're only doing 650 damage on average with those shells... Oh, I thought he was going to go backwards, but he was good. I thought he was going to continue to go backwards, I should say. But he actually stopped lurch forward. Neo avoids the shell there. And I am left looking rather awkward. So 2,600 damage so far in the first four and a half minutes of this game. There's no doubt that I've missed a few of my shells, but look at this aim time. Oh, well, that would have been an easy kill if it wasn't for that 705A on my team. But I'm trying to highlight the playstyle of what I think this tank will be. Look at it. It's rather mobile. It's more like a medium tank than a, a, a tank destroyer. One of the slower mediums, I'd say. Something like a, a T62A, and that thing's got great ground resistance and is unlike this, however. But you can just race into positions, and I can imagine this tank surprising its opponents by getting into locations that the otherwise wouldn't thought it would have been in yet. This T100LT is going to come around the corner, reacts too slow to the fact that I'm inside the cap circle. And that's an easy kill for me. Oh, so there's a 705A just sitting, defending base, I guess. Okay, no problem. 111-14, I believe. I'm oh, no, sorry, 11-5A gets a shot into the... Oh, it's a 113G, actually. Managed to get his shot into my back. I'm going to wait till he turns too much. Now I'm going to try and angle my armor in. Did I roll for 666 again? Hmm. That's... That's more... Then a coincidence. Okay, let's just ignore that and focus on what's important. And that is trying to lock down this flank while those 4005s are going to come around the corner. Okay, we've got an object 430U right through his lower side armor. The 113G FT fires a heat round into me and I've run out of armor piercing rounds because my marksmanship has been so bad this game. But I still feel like punishing him. I should be able to get an easy round in here and then pull back. There you go. 573 damage though. Ouch. It's a bit of a low roll. Still, up to 5,000 damage now. The 4005s come around the corner and obliterate the 5, the 7, sorry, the 705. I got all of these object names. I don't know, can you keep up with it? It's still rather challenging for me to get it right. But now I'm hull down against a 113 FT. He fires into, looks like he tried to shoot me in my weak point there, but it didn't manage to fully go into the tank. I tank it and finish him off. And now I'm just in the dream position for this scenario. Well, dream position. This scenario is the dream for the tank, I should say. One right into the back. A nice roll there for 756. We haven't seen too many rolls of less than 600 this game. I guess I've been fortunate with how much damage we've been doing. And you know what? Not too bad. Fair enough, I don't get the snack at the end of the game, and at the end of it, I try to race into position to get the version 4. We crash into a rock. We don't find him. GG. So we saw 6,398 damage here, but actually I did manage to pick up 7,145. So which was the tank that I blind fired? Oh, it was the T62A. It looks like I hit him for 747. And that was enough to get a high caliber for us in a tier 10 game and a confederate medal for playing a good supporting role and damaging six tanks that were subsequently killed by my allies. So the Object 268 version 4 seems to be a tank destroyer that has it all apart from that, that tier 10 tank destroyer gun. And sure, if you can use the other strong aspects of this tank, i.e. the mobility and the armor, to outflank and outplay your foes, you could still do very, very well in this video. Vehicle. And that's great when you're maybe lacking a heavy tank on your team and you need a tank destroyer to make the assault and push the breakthrough. However, there's no doubt that the firepower of this tank is completely lacking and I expect the accuracy of 0.42 will really hold it back in those long range snipe fests, where you just absolutely have to get as much damage across the map as accurately and with as high as penetration and alpha and DPM as possible. And so I'm personally very curious how the Object 268 version 4 is going to perform on the live server 
together because I think it could be absolutely awesome in the correct scenario and I expect this vehicle is going to become a fan favourite amongst the aggressive all-in players. And so that's it for today ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video or maybe it was just useful to you, if it was give it a thumbs up but if you absolutely hated it give it a thumbs down and let me know in the comments what you think about the 268 version 4. And if you're a diehard object 263 player can you see yourself playing this tank and actually enjoying it? And as always thank you so much for watching, you've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.